Hello. You're muted. Sorry, hi. So um, it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker who will be talking to us about core values, how, what, and why. This is a Yoji Shimizu from That's okay. How are you? 1816, The Great Machine. Thank you. How are things going? And presentations have been great so far. Yeah, they're going all right. Thank you. Good. It's been really right. interesting to see them. Yes, absolutely. Well, I want to thank the organizers of 24 Hours of Zen for, uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to present uh, this evening. And um, greetings from the state of Minnesota here in the United States. And I uh, hope you're doing well uh, wherever you are. Um, I'm going to share my screen now and uh, kind of get this started for you. So let me introduce myself first. Uh, I'm Yoji Shemizu. My uh, pronouns are he and him and his. And uh, I've been involved with FIRST Robotics since uh, 2005. And actually, my first exposure to FIRST Robotics was as a parent chaperone uh, for my son, who was a member of uh, Team 1816, the Green Machine, in its initial rookie year. So that was uh, first championships in Atlanta. Um, and then I started volunteering for the program around 2009 and uh, initially started as a game announcer and then uh, more recently have been uh, serving as a master of ceremonies for uh, regional events here in the upper Midwest as well as at uh, first championships um, in St. Louis, Houston and, and Detroit. And um, I've also been working as a, as a mentor uh, with uh, Team 1816 The Green Machine. And really what I'd like to do today with our presentation is really to talk to you about um, core values. And, and really what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about uh, kind of defining what core values are, uh, why we think they're important for uh, an FRC team, and then take you through a process that uh, we used to help um, the Green Machine 1816, as well as other teams here in the upper Midwest in the US uh, to develop and identify uh, core values for their team. And then we'll end up with um, some discussion about uh, the potential positive impact of having uh, done that kind of exercise. So, um, so really this is, this, is, uh, this is work that was really started initially with, um, with uh, Team 1816, the Green Machine um, here in Edina, Minnesota. All right, so um, let me uh, take you through this process and talk to you initially about what we're talking about when we're uh, thinking about uh, core values. Um, and really um, what core values are, are the are principles or standards of behavior for a person or an organization. And, and we're really talking here about um, essential and sort of bedrock or constant principles. So these are principles that really help a person or an organization, or in this case, an FRC team to really uh, guide and dictate their behavior and to um, clarify who you are and what you stand for and to guide you in making decisions. Now, a lot of decisions, may, maybe many decisions on an FRC team may be fairly easy, but there will be times when a team will have to make some really difficult decisions. And it's, and it's during those difficult decisions in particular when you really need to, to lean on your core values and really um, use them to sort of figure out essentially which pathway you wanna take. It's really designed to kind of help you determine if you and your team are kind of pursuing uh, the right path. So, um, so that's kind of what, what we're talking about here when we're, when we're talking about core values. Now in FIRST Robotics, you know, all of us have actually one common foundational core value and that is of course, gracious professionalism, right? So this is really, um, as Woody Flowers has defined, part of the ethos of FIRST. Um, it is a way of uh, doing things that encourages high quality work, emphasizes the value of others and respects um, individuals and the community. And um, you know, this is a very important and vital uh, part of FIRST Robotics. Um, but I, I think it's really important to remember that gracious professionalism is, um, is necessary, but probably uh, not sufficient for um, every FRC team. So uh, when we think about this, we're really thinking about uh, gracious professionalism and being kind of the foundation for a team. And built on top of that foundation of gracious professionalism will be a set of core values that are really kind of unique and specific 
to the team uh, and 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 what it's trying to uh, what it's trying to do. And so the that combination of the core values as well as the gracious professionalism is what allows a team to kind of fulfill its mission and its vision. So uh, you probably have heard this before that in many uh, you know FRC teams are really kind of like businesses and all businesses have mission, vision, and values. And this is the same process by uh, which uh, FRC teams operate. So, um, you know, the mission is really kind of what you want to accomplish as a team. What is the overall vision that you have in terms of what you're reaching for as, a, as an FRC team? And the core values really define kind of how you're going to accomplish um, that mission. So how are you actually going to go about doing your work and defining how you're going to move uh, how are you going to move forward? Okay, so um, when we initially began this process of trying to uh, help um, a team to kind of develop its core values, we had a number of kind of um, what I'd call kind of key principles that we were, were trying to use as we were kind of developing this process. And, and these were the ones that were really most important for us. So one of them was that um, we really, uh, we really kind of insist that the entire team should participate in this pro in this process because, um, as you'll see in a minute, the way in which this process works is that individual team members contribute their own kind of set of personal values into this discussion. So this is a way to kind of create uh, team buy-in into the overall process. And so when a specific when team members aren't there during this process, then of course we don't get the value and the benefit of that team member's um, uh, own, own values and kind of their perspective. And so it becomes more difficult later on as we go through this process to get the entire team to kind of buy into, uh, into the overall final sets of core values that are, um, that are identified and defined by the team. Um, second principle is really that we wanna create a very safe space for discussion because um, there, this is a process that involves a lot of uh, vigorous discussion, um, what uh, some friends of mine will call intense fellowship. There can be some disagreements about uh, which, uh, which way you want to go, which value is the most important. Um, so you need to create uh, an environment that allows for those kinds of um, sometimes difficult, intense conversations to happen. So in many cases, we kind of begin the process with some team building or other kinds of approaches in which uh, a team can really feel comfortable kind of talking about, uh, about these, these kinds of uh, questions. Um, a third principle is that we want this to be entirely student driven. And, and this is really just based on the fact that, that uh, Team 1816, the Green Machine is really a, a very student driven team. And this is really comes back to the history of the team and the way it was started, which is really the team was founded by uh, an 11th grade student um, at our high school. And so um, that's sort of the culture that's been established within the team that, that we really want the, the students to drive the process. Um, but at the same time, we, uh, we value the advice and guidance of our mentors. And uh, in this case, actually, we decided to have the mentors kind of work in parallel with our students um, so that, uh, they kind of went through this process um, at the same time, but sort of independently of the students. And then we took what the mentors came up with and we took what the students came up with and we allowed the students to decide, are there things that they would like to take from what the mentors developed and incorporate it ultimately into their uh, team core values process. Now we've worked with other teams in which the mentors work, uh, don't work in parallel, basically work together with the students um, and that works just as well too. It really kind of depends on your team culture and kind of where you, um, where the team would like to um, invest, I guess, in the in the uh, in the work that the mentors put into the, into the team as well. So that's a that's a team decision, a team specific decision that uh, needs to be made before um, before the team kind of engages in this kind of process. And then the fifth and final principle was, was we really wanted a third party facilitator. So we wanted someone who was not uh, a, you know, a regular kind of day-to-day -day mentor, but someone who, could, um, who knew the team, but could also kind of facilitate and be independent of this, uh, this entire discussion between students and mentors. And at the time that um, Team 1816 kind of went through this process, 
I was in that kind of position where, where I was able to serve as the, as the third party facilitator in the sense that I had, I, had, I had done mentoring with the team, but it wasn't in all aspects of team function. It was only in specific acts, uh, small aspects of team function. And so um, I was familiar with the team, but uh, in a position where I was not maybe perceived as being embedded within the team as, as one of the, one of the, um, one of the really um, strong regular mentors on the team. So I think that was helpful as well in terms of um, making this process work well and making both the students and the mentors feel that their, um, their voices were being heard through this process. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do now is kind of for the next few minutes, kind of take you through this overall process. So this is actually the way in which uh, we go from a large number of values down to a final set of team core values here on the right side of the screen. So really the way you should think about this is maybe like a, like a funnel. So you put a, you put a bunch of marbles in the funnel and then ultimately at the end, you winnow this out till you get a small number of marbles that come out of the funnel. That's really what this process is kind of all about. So you begin with a, a large number, kind of a survey of different kinds of values that you might wanna consider and then an iterative, iterative process by which you, um, you narrow that list down to a smaller number of values to the final, to the final point where you get a, a final set of team core values. All right, so let's, uh, let's go through how this, how this works or how we're currently actually doing this process for teams. So we'll start here with this process here, which is basically kind of identifying the values. So this is basically the process of kind of generating a large list, a master list of all values that the team might want to consider as part of their um, part of their core values. And the way that we do this now actually is with a survey. And so we use a, um, we use a, a Google form survey, um, which we actually uh, send out to a team before we actually get together in a workshop. So this is an example of, a, of one of these um, core value surveys. And basically it just indicates that you'll be participating in a workshop to identify the team's core values, essential principles or standards of behavior for this particular team. So this is a pre-workshop survey um, that's designed to kind of generate that, uh, this, this larger list that's shown here in the slide. Right. And so to set this up, we provide a couple of additional pieces of information. So one is we ask um, everybody who's completing the survey to actually watch a TED talk. And this is a TED talk from, um, that, that's called Why Values Matter. So it's very short, nine minute uh, TED talk that basically goes through this process of defining what is a core value or what are values, why are they important, why do they matter, uh, why should you spend time actually figuring out what your, uh, what your core values are. So that kind of helps frame the discussion and allows uh, students and mentors to think about um, what kinds of values they would want to put down. And then this is the, oops, this is the, this is the actual instructions for the survey, right? So the survey basically is sort of, um, again, um, defining what these values are. These are the things that you believe are important in the way that you live and work. And um, again, these values serve as guidance in determining how you do things. And in the TED Talk, these are kind of defined as um, situation independent decision helpers, which I think is a really interesting and good way to think about, uh, think about um, why you would even wanna think about having uh, identified values. And then we give a couple of uh, questions or prompts. So how do you identify values that are important to you? You know, there are ways you can do this where you can think of people you admire or love, what values do they embody? Think about organizations that you admire, what values do they embody? Maybe identify the times when you were happiest, what were you doing? Identify the times when you were most proud. Why were you proud? Or identify the times when you were most fulfilled and satisfied. How and why did that experience give your life meaning? So those again are, these are kind of prompts to get uh, the person filling out the survey to really think about carefully about the values. And then um, for some people, they actually just want a large list. And so um, we also provide actually a link to a, a document, a PDF that basically has a list of a large number of core values. So if a, uh, someone who's completing a, completing a survey just wants to kind of look through that list and identify the ones that they, uh, they resonate with the most, that's another way to do that as well. And it's really, really important at this point, I think we really want 
everybody who's completing the survey to think about their own kind of personal values, like what's really important to, to them personally. So again, in this case, they're really, you know, through this entire exercise, there are really no kind of right or wrong answers because the values are really unique to who you are. And when you when the team develops the values, that they'll be completely unique to who the team is. So um, we really want this personal investment and sort of this, um, this, um, we want this, we want everybody completing the survey to really um, indicate kind of what personally is really, really important to them because that's that sort of helps define the team culture as you move through this exercise. So in this particular case, we asked this uh, everybody to, to enter or identify four, four values, their top four values. Now, the total number of values that we kind of asked for in the survey kind of depends a little bit on the size of the team. So we've worked with teams as small as five or six students to uh, and one or two mentors to teams as large as 75 or 80 students and 20 mentors. And again, we're looking for a large number of values here, but not so many that they're unmanageable. So again, for a smaller team, we might ask for five values, maybe for a larger team, it might be three. Um, and you can imagine that uh, multiple people will identify the same value, right? Which is fine. Um, but ultimately you're gonna end up with a pretty large list of, of values once you compile all the results from this survey. So once this survey is completed, um, we end up with a large list. And so this is, for example, at our, and this is when we bring the team together for the core values workshop. So here's a, a set of sheets and they've got a bunch of core values here. There are values that are listed here. This is probably 35 or 40 different ones that are listed. And this is what was generated from this kind of survey, right? So, and, and uh, so we, we're taking every single value that was identified in the survey putting them down on big sheets of paper so that the entire team can take a look at them as they go to the next step in this process. So the next step in this process is actually trying to pick out a smaller number of these as being the most important. And so when we're talking about the number here, we're really probably talking about anywhere between 12 or 13 values to maybe 20 at the most is what we wanna kind of come up with. And the way that we do this is actually we do kind of uh, this um, affinity or dot exercise. So we give each person participating in the workshop a set of five sticky dots. And we ask them to go up to the sheets and put a dot next to their five most important values. And again, the rule here is that uh, a person has to put a dot next to five different values. So they can't put five dots on one value. So they want, we want them to identify five different ones. So you can see here in both of these, there are lots of dots that have been placed against some of the values and few, if any, dots placed on others, right? And that's how we end up with this kind of smaller list of values. This is shown over here as well with this particular team. You can see some of these values have got dots going up all the way across the page. Um, which really um, shows you that those are the ones that the uh, team members have really identified as, as being particularly important. So we've gone from this larger list and now we're down to sort of this smaller list of kind of um, 12 to 20 different values. Um, to make this a little easier for you to kind of understand how this process works, here's a list actually of values from one of the teams that we've worked with. And um, in parentheses are basically shown the number of dots that were placed next to each of these different values. So you can see this ranged from anywhere from um, some values where just one person identified them as important to those where there were um, you know, four or more people that identified these as being particularly important. And for this particular team, they decided that they wanted to work now with the ones in red. So the ones in red, the values in red were the ones they wanted to consider moving forward in terms of their kind of key core values. And again, this is, this is all up to the team and the way the team would like to proceed. You know, the, no, there's nothing magical about four. It's really just kind of dependent on, the, on taking a careful look at these different values and trying to decide which ones are the ones they wanna consider moving forward. So, um, so in this case, you know, it was two, four, six, eight, 10. it was 12 different values that they were kind of working with as they move forward, all right? So that's that next step. And so, um, so now really having 12 different uh, values is really 
generally probably too many for a, for a team to really, uh, for that to be useful. So we really wanna get this down even further to um, really somewhere between probably four to seven different core values ultimately. And so um, the next step of this process is actually to take that list, for example, in that previous slide of 12 core values and group them together. And so if they're ones that makes that the team members feel um, are similar to each other, uh, we ask them to kind of uh, put them into smaller groups. So that those 12 core values, you know, decide to put them into three or four different clusters, if you will. And, um, and within each of those clusters, identify the value that's the most important to, um, to, that, to that cluster. And when we do this, we do this really with small groups. And so we break the team up into smaller groups of four or five different people and with students within each group or sets of students and mentors. And the way this kind of works pretty well in person is to give them, for example, small index cards and ask them to write each of the 12 different values on a different index card so they can kind of move them around on a table and figure out which, one, which groupings they want, uh, they want to put them into. Um, and that's, for example, what this particular uh, set of students is doing here is they've got all these different uh, values listed on these different cards and they're basically kind of discussing and moving them sort of to see how that overall process, what those different clusters kind of look like. And then we bring the entire team back together and we, and we basically compare, we share and compare um, how each of the small groups kind of uh, did this to see if there are any kind of common themes, can we identify any common groupings of values that multiple groups, uh, multiple subgroups have been able to identify. And so we often do this just on a, on a computer screen with a PowerPoint or Excel sheet um, as shown in this particular slide. And there's lots of discussion here. This is probably where the bulk of the time is spent actually in uh, discussing what makes the most sense. Do you agree with this particular set, putting this value together with this one? Um, and there's lots of really interesting discussion that takes place when you, when you get to this, this point of the process in terms of um, seeing what the different groups kind of come up with and, uh, and ultimately uh, coming to some consensus about um, what, is, what is really important and how this is done. So again, let's turn back to this previous slide and let me show you kind of, they took these, uh, they took these 12 values in red and this is actually the result of the five different subgroups that did this exercise. And we tried to color code them based on the ones that were pretty similar. So you can see, for example, here, um, the, this uh, value of commitment or committed and dedicated was often put together by multiple uh, groups. Not every single group did that, but you could see that at least here four of the five, actually all five of them here in this process did that. And there were others that were sort of put together as well. Supportive, encouraging, and positive, for example, were often lumped together by multiple groups, which allowed them to come to some, uh, some agreement about what they wanted to do. So after this kind of group team discussion, they ultimately ended up with this set. And so this was the final set and they identified sort of four core values, um, integrity, passionate, determined, and supportive. And then they have these other values kind of uh, underneath those, the, the, the header, if you will, or, the, or the, final, the most important one. What's interesting about this particular team was actually these four values in red were actually never in this initial discussion. So um, this group, this team spent a lot of time talking about all of these different ones and ultimately decided to go back, take a few steps back and think about this some, some more because they, they thought they were missing something. And so ultimately what they ended up with was actually integrity as a really key core value, even though that didn't come out of this initial process. So, um, so they, ident they put in the, uh, four additional core values in this process, which, which was interesting. And again, kind of illustrates kind of the flexibility of this approach in terms of, you can always go back, rethink it, um, as you, as you discuss more and more, you begin to see whether in fact these really kind of represent the, the core values that you want. But this is basically the process that they used to ultimately come up with these four um, groupings uh, of values as they, um, as they move forward, right? So that's that process. And that's basically kind of where the overall kind of workshop for us kind of ends, where the entire team is together. So you end up with these, you know, four to seven kinds of values. You have some other values that are kind of put together with them. And the challenge at this point is really to kind of 
finalize those to get the team to really think carefully about whether in fact those are the really um, final set. And in many cases, teams will actually draft what we call value statements. So these are sentences or paragraphs or word, additional words that basically uh, provide some context to what that value actually means to the team. And so this can be done in a variety of different ways. Generally, it isn't facilitated. Um, it's done either with the entire team independently or perhaps with a small subcommittee of the team that's really interested and committed to kind of, um, kind of drafting those statements. So let me show you a couple of examples of what these statements look like. Two are from FRC teams and two are actually uh, not from FRC teams, but are, but are uh, good illustrations, I think, of, um, of what these uh, ultimate final core value statements look like. Um, so this is an example from uh, Team 1816, in which um, this uh, 1816 actually identified a subset of team members, I think it was four or five team members, who worked with a couple of mentors to basically come up with these value statements. And so one of their key core values was trust. And underneath that, they grouped together dependable, reliable, respectful, and accountable. And they had one team member basically draft a statement. And so that first draft of that statement was basically, we believe that our team collaborates most effectively with a foundation built on trust. We follow through on commitments, encourage open and honest communication, are credible and reliable, and act with candor and accountability. So that statement was brought back to this larger uh, values committee. And then the committee basically spent uh, some time basically editing and changing this to a point where everybody on the committee felt happy about it. And so the final statement that was uh, developed was basically trust for this team means our team works at its best with relationships built on trust. We live up to our responsibilities by being credible, reliable, and accountable. And we create a safe environment that enables open and honest communication. So you can see there are some of these other kind of sub-values that are embedded in these statements, like reliable and accountable, and the safe environment that enables open and honest communication kind of encompasses um, the, the respectful part of that, uh, of that set of values. So this is the statement that was brought back to the entire team. The entire team was presented with, um, with the entire set of statements and the team basically voted to adopt them as, um, as the team's core values. So this is what that looks like. So this was the process for uh, Team 1816 Degree Machine. Um, this was developed actually at, um, the workshop was actually held at a team retreat. And then uh, that was in the fall of 2017. And over the course of the next two to two and a half months, uh, the team that, that values committee basically came up with these value statements for the five team core values, which were respect, trust, inclusivity, commitment, and uh, joy of life, right? So that's the, that was the process that um, resulted from this first kind of core values workshop that we, uh, that we did with team 1816. And um, let me show you another one. This is, uh, this is from another team here in Minnesota called the Robets. This is an all girls team from, um, from just outside of the Twin Cities. And uh, we were honored to work with this team to help them with uh, core values, which they wanted to do in the fall of 2018. Um, after they had won the chairman's award or their first chairman's award, they wanted to kind of really uh, crystallize what their core values were. And so they came up with confidence, integrity, compassion, perseverance, and curiosity. And again, instead of having statements in this case, they had sort of bullet points. So confidence is having faith in one's own abilities and standing up for them not worrying about what others think when we put ourselves out on a limb, trying new things. So um, I know that this team uh, spent a lot of time on this set of core values um, and lots of meetings where they really thought carefully about each and every word in these statements with, uh, with the core values. This was a really important exercise for this team in terms of identifying exactly what they mean by confidence, integrity, compassion, and so forth. Um, so that's how they, they work this. And let me show you two other examples of core value statements. So this is not from FRC. This is actually from uh, Tony Bennett. And if you're a college basketball fan here in the United States, Tony Bennett is the head basketball coach at the University of Virginia. Uh, and the University of Virginia won the NCAA championship uh, in 2019, I believe. And uh, this is essentially a tweet from the coach um, describing Tony Bennett's program pillars. 
humility, passion, unity, servanthood, and thankfulness. And these are essentially the core values for his basketball program. And again, here, instead of large, uh, long statements, he's just got a couple of additional words, you know, humility, know who you are, passion, love what you do, unity, stick together. Um, so one advantage of kind of this smaller set of words is basically it's fairly easy to remember what they are. Um, so um, in that sense, there's, there's some value in terms of they're kind of sticky, you, you kind of, it's easy to kind of remember. And so I think that's one, uh, one potential benefit of kind of being a little more uh, concise and succinct, but, um, but e I think either approach kind of works. And then um, I don't remember exactly when, but first actually also recently kind of identified its core values. And so um, this is their statement of, uh, we express the first philosophies of gracious professionalism and cooperation through our core values, which are discovery, innovation, impact, inclusion, teamwork, and fun. And again, they've got very, very short sentences that um, define what those core values mean to FIRST as, as an organization, right? So those are four different examples of, of, um, of, of core values and, and their value statements that go with those. All right, so this is again the entire process in terms of the time commitment that's involved with this. Um, you know, when we initially started these workshops, we actually um, got together uh, the entire team and actually went through this process of identifying the values uh, together as a team. Um, the disadvantage was it made the workshop longer. And I think the other disadvantage to that approach was it didn't really give team members and mentors time to really think carefully about what are the values that really matter to them as an individual. So that's why we turn to this kind of pre-workshop survey in a Google form, because this again will give uh, team members and mentors time to think about this, this question a little bit more carefully um, before the actual kind of in-person workshop or team workshop takes place. So once that's done, the rest of this here, these two steps generally take about an hour and a half to two hours to do this. Um, and again, it's that's really not uh, dependent too much on the team size. If it's a small team or a large team in general, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours to work through this process and ultimately come up with uh, those kind of clusters of values. And then this part, the finalizing the values and drafting the value statements, this can be done in a variety of different ways. It can be facilitated. It doesn't have to be facilitated. In most, time, most cases, it's not. It's generally done by students and mentors on the team. Um, and it can be anywhere from a couple of days. Some teams have told us that basically it was very quick for them to kind of figure this out and draft their value statements. The other teams where it, where it takes months to do this. Um, so um, it can take two or three months in order to kind of identify this and, and come to an agreement about um, what the final values are and what the value statements are. So um, in many cases, teams uh, that we've worked with um, start this process probably in the fall and try and get this entire thing done before kickoff. So that, you know, this is really not an exercise that uh, can be done effectively during build season. It's really something that is kind of a pre-season, pre-kickoff kind of activity. And the value of doing that is that once the intensity of build season kind of comes around, um, these values are hopefully embedded in the team and the way that the team works and will make everything that the team does work more efficiently and more effectively. That's really the, the hope and the, and the purpose of, of doing this kind of work before, um, before everything kicks off with uh, kickoff and build and competition season. All right, so um, we have worked now with uh, 24, 25 different teams. Um, all of these teams are in the upper Midwest of the US and uh, we've, uh, we, we've been delighted to kind of work with each and every one of these teams to kind of help them with this, uh, with this core values exercise. And, and I can tell you that every team comes up with a unique set of, of core values. The process is, is identical essentially, but every team is unique, every team is different. And uh, it's really fascinating and wonderful to see kind of the unique sets of values that each team identifies um, through, this, uh, through this process. So um, I, I hope uh, that for each of these teams, it was a, it was a process that was uh, worth the time and the investment uh, that was put into it. Um, so th you know, these are just some pictures of teams that are kind of working on this process with with us. Um, and again, you'll see a lots of examples where teams are you know group team members are kind of clustered around tables, kind of 
thinking about how their uh, how their values should be arranged or, or doing this kind of uh, dot exercise to identify kinds of the, uh, the you know their top five uh, top five values. But uh, these are just some examples of the way in which this is done um, uh, for these teams. So we've done some feedback on this with uh, teams. So we've gotten uh, 42 different responses, and and just uh, I think there's. Uh, for the most part, teams are quite satisfied with, with the investment in this in terms of the workshop living up to their expectations or sustaining the interest and participation of their team. Um, the importance of having an outside facilitator, um, whether it was a benefit and whether they would recommend that other teams complete the core values exercise. So again, um, almost all of the responses that we're getting back um, agree or strongly agree with these, uh, with these particular statements. So in terms of like an overall rating, um, you know, 95% of the responses again um, rated the overall kind of exercises um, as excellent or outstanding. Um, and this is one example here of one of the teams that we worked with um, just this past season that came up with, you know, a set of uh, really wonderful core values and, and uh, really strong uh, value statements. So let's talk a little bit about impact, I guess, and sort of why this is of this is of importance for an FRC team. So, um, so this is a slide from the Green Machine about this issue of impact. So, um, for the Green Machine, really, this has been an exercise where the core values have really helped with guiding decision making. It's it's really um, a way in which to kind of provide a concrete focus on what the team really values. And it was really important for 1816 that everyone was involved in the process because it, it fully reflected the team and, and allowed them to really think about what they're doing and making sure that everything that they're doing fits their vision, their mission, and is done in a way that kind of honors the core values that they've identified. Um, it guides kind of everyday behaviors that uh, the team kind of works on. And this is at every single aspect of team function. So everything from, outreach to, uh, to the build season, to what happens to competitions. Um, it's a pathway to gracious professionalism as a student and, um, and, and beyond, and has served as a really important uh, unifying force on the team and a, and, a, and a way in which to kind of really um, energize the team. And I think for this team in the fall of 2017, this came at a really important time for the team. And I think, uh, um, you know, since the development of the core values, really this team has had some of its most successful seasons ever. Um, and and uh, we hope that some of that was due to the fact that they took the time to kind of really think about um, um, what was important to them so that they could really, uh, really focus on the things that were really key to their vision, mission, and values. Um, so, uh, you know, there are a couple of things about this once you go through the exercise that I think are important to kind of remember. So one is that um, just be uh, 10 times as clear about your values as you think you should be. So um, once you identify what they are, it's just really important to remind yourself and to remind the people that you interact with, your community, other teams, um, what those values are. And uh, I don't think you can ever kind of overemphasize um, the values that you have and why you think they're important. Um, it's often useful to kind of use some catchphrases. These are often very simple and action-oriented and forthright. Uh, some teams have developed acronyms to kind of uh, remind themselves of what their core values are. Um, and those are often very useful to kind of uh, remember and, and keep, keep them in mind as you move forward with your activities. And then, um, it's really important to kind of use kind of artifacts that actually uh, remind yourself as you're working, either in the workshop or in your pits or in the community, kind of what, uh, what your values are so that you can really remind yourself about what really matters. And what we're, when we're talking about artifacts, we're really talking about symbols or other kinds of things that emphasize these core values. So let me give you examples of, of some of the things that teams have done with this. So, um, one is, for example, pit banners, um, and that's what that's what this team 5690 did. So that that uh, large banner is basically the banner that's that now hangs in the back of their pits at competition. So again, this is a very visible reminder to the team, as well as anybody who visits the team, kind of what what they're all about, and uh, and so that's a that's a very effective kind of artifact. 
Um, you can have values posters in your workshop and other areas. So this is actually the Robets set of values, 2177. And this is actually a poster that's hanging in their workshop. And they have a number of these kinds of posters that are all over their workshop, again, to just kind of remind the team about what, the, what their uh, core values are. Obviously, you can do swag, you know, team shirt, t-shirts, buttons. This is an example of a lanyard from another team, um, which really defines a, a, variety, a, a list of values that, that are important to them. So, you know, every team member is wearing this lanyard at a competition and right on the back of the lanyard are all the different values that the team has. Um, so that, that works effectively well. And, uh, and you can also come up with things like awards to recognize team values, or team members to kind of exemplify the team core values. You know, I'm sure as a team, you can think of lots of different ways in which you can be creative in terms of making sure that you're, um, you're remembering um, what your core values are. So again, um, you know, this is a quote from a book called The Culture Code by Daniel Coyle. And uh, this is a book about successful organizations and what makes them successful. And again, um, the key thing is about, you can never be, um, you can never overemphasize the importance of your values. So when I visited the successful groups, I noticed that whenever they communicated anything about their purpose or their values, they were as subtle as a punch in the nose. So it's again, very, very important to kind of, um, kind of let people know kind of what's important to you and what matters to you. All right, so a couple of things about sustaining core values before we finish up. So, um, you know, there are some, you know, going through the exercise, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, for an organization to maybe do like a strategic plan. So in many cases, unfortunately, organizations and companies will spend a lot of time working on a strategic plan. And then that plan gets put on the shelf and nobody ever looks at it again. And that's really not what you want as an FRC team when it comes to kind of developing these kinds of core values. So you have to think carefully about how you're going to use them. And so, for example, there are some questions here that uh, I think teams need to think about. So, for example, how will you hold each other to your team's core values? Um, how will your team deal with instances when your core values are violated or disregarded? Um, um, teams often uh, deal with this issue, sort of um, when behavior is not kind of what the team expects um, and you feel that they're not consistent with your core values, what, how are you gonna deal with that? How will your team kind of deal with that effectively? Um, how are your team, uh, on, the, on the flip side is sort of, you wanna celebrate the wins, right? So how will you actually celebrate when you feel that core values are really uh, effectively demonstrated by team members? And then this question of just sustainability, right? So the core values exercise involves the thinking of the team at the time that you do the workshop. And so that team is gonna change. Teams, uh, team members are gonna graduate, mentors are gonna leave, new team members are gonna come in, new mentors are gonna come, come into your team. So how will you introduce and uh, introduce the team culture with new team members and with new team mentors um, to your core values? So there are processes and ways by which teams are doing this now to make sure that the team, uh, the team core values are, are sustainable over time, right? So, um, you know, these are some examples of what some teams here are doing. So for example, um, instilling the core values throughout the year through team meetings. Um, I know 1816 has spent some time at different meetings throughout the competition season where they focus on specific core values and go through some exercises again to kind of remind uh, the team about what is meant, for example, by the core value of commitment or respect or trust. Um, the team holds an annual retreat. And again, this is another occasion in which the team can discuss uh, core values and, and really think about them carefully. And again, at competition events, that's often a case where things get really intense. Some really uh, key decisions need to be made really, really quickly. And again, these are the occasions when, um, when understanding when every team member understands what the core values are, you can, uh, you can make those decisions and feel good about them. Um, there are other teams that actually have, uh, for example, um, at the start of a season, they'll sign a pledge or a commitment and that pledge or a commitment will really focus on um, a reminder about what the, what the core values of the team are. And so um, having that visible document that all team members kind of, um, kind of sign 
is, is, a, is, a, is a good way of kind of keeping core values alive. Um, this isn't done with, uh, I haven't seen this done with a team so far, but uh, I know of, for example, a, a church that basically went through a core values process. They printed a large banner with all the core values on them and they had every church member sign it. And then they put that in the lobby. So again, that's another way of kind of demonstrating that, uh, that there's buy-in essentially to, um, to the values that have been developed. Again, if you have a team handbook, you can often kind of codify the core values in the, um, in the handbook itself is another way to kind of do this. All right, so um, just as a final um, slide here, I think this is the final one. Um, we have a number of different options that, you know, if your team is interested in doing this um, work, um, that we could potentially help you. So, um, so one is um, in-person facilitation. So that, this, this is something that, you know, we have done for teams that are basically within driving distance of Minneapolis, St. Paul. So, I, you know, if, it's, if anybody's listening from within that kind of circumference, um, we are happy to kind of facilitate this in person if you feel that that's something that would be useful for, for you. Now, of course, right now with the pandemic, um, in person is not really something that can be done. So, um, so we have developed, uh, we have modified the core values process that I've described in this presentation so that it can be done virtually. So, um, so that means that we can potentially facilitate this for teams um, pretty much anywhere. So, um, so we're happy to do that as well. If this is something that you're potentially interested in, um, we're actually kind of interested and eager to see um, how well this will work in a virtual format. So that's, that's another option. And then we also have a guide. So if, you're, if you would like to, to do it on your own, we'd encourage you to do that, of course, but we can give you some resources. We can give you access to that survey. Um, we can give you kind of a how-to guide that basically will take you through that process. And we're happy to kind of um, work with any uh, team facilitator that you identify who might, uh, who might wanna do this for your team. And I know a couple of local teams in the area have done this um, independently and, and have done a really, really amazing great job in doing it that way. So these are options that are available for teams if you, um, if you are interested in doing this. Um, this is not the only way to kind of develop core values. I think there are lots of different approaches that you can take, but, um, but this, is, this is the one that has, uh, that has worked well for us. So, um, so this is my contact information. Again, um, you are, please reach out to, to me directly if you have any questions. On the Adina Robotics website, there is a there is a page on the on the Adina Robotics uh, 1816 web uh, site um, under resources that has some more information about uh, about the core values process and kind of um, how we how we go about doing that. So um, so I think with that, I am going to stop and uh, and take some questions. I hope and and thank you for listening. Thank you. That was a very good presentation. Um, we have some questions from the live chat that I'm going to ask you. Sure. Um, so the first one is, how often should a team reset or evolve their core values? That's a really, really good question. And um, uh, I think different teams are approaching this in different ways. So, um, you know, we're kind of not far, far enough along in this process to know the specific answer to that question. So, for example, our team developed these core values in 2017. And um, we have not yet kind of made a decision to go back and revisit them. I think some other teams that we've worked with are probably thinking about maybe at every four to five year cycle in terms of, of revisiting them. It's a really interesting question because I think in many cases, you would think that the core values would be fairly constant and essential as kind of described at the beginning. And so maybe they really wouldn't need to be changed uh, from uh, on a regular basis. But FRC teams, you know, are a little bit different than a company or organization in, in the sense that there is a lot of turnover. And so um, it may actually be a worthwhile exercise to say, let's re-examine these. Let's make sure that these are the, the values that are still important and meaningful to us. And uh, maybe we want to go through that process again with a completely new team. If you think about, you know, most, you know, most, uh, most, I think in our team, probably four or five years is the most amount of time that any one team member would spend on the team. So maybe that's kind of when you might think about revisiting them. But that's, we haven't 
we haven't done that yet. So I don't really know the answer to it. It's a really good question. Thank you for that. Um, another question. Um, how long does your value setting process usually take to complete? Um, for us, if you're talking about the entire process from starting to the actual point where you have like a document that you would present, for example, to the team or to a sponsor, for example, or in, in an outreach event, that's really variable. It goes anywhere from uh, a couple of, uh, maybe a week or, more, or less to months. It really depends. The actual workshop that I described to you today really takes only about an hour and a half to two hours. So there's some a little bit of advanced work in terms of everybody kind of completing the survey and doing all of that work. But once we get everybody together, either in person or virtually, that should generally take only about an hour and a half to two hours. The final piece, which is what you wanna do with those values once you've identified them and how you want to define them is the part that's really variable. Um, with the 24, 25 teams that we've worked with, it's been, everything from a couple of days where a mentor has told me, well, yeah, we got that figured out really quickly to other teams that were like, it's taking us months to kind of figure that out. So I think that really depends on the team and kind of, um, kind of how they want to approach that. Cool, thank you. Um, another question, not sure if this is the last one or not. Um, what is the most popular core value that you've seen teams adopt? <laughs> that's, a, that's a really, Good question, and I, and I, I actually have that, let's see if I can, okay, here we go, All right. So um, these are the, these are the ones that have come up the most with the, uh, 24 teams that we've worked with. So respect, hardworking, open-minded, fun, trust, teamwork, honesty, integrity have been the ones that have been most commonly identified by, uh, by teams. I will tell you that the one core value that generates the most discussion among teams is the core value of fun. <laughs> there, there's, a, there's sort of um, a reluctance by some teams to um, identify fun as a core value. Um, and, and it's a really interesting discussion that takes place when that happens in the sense that there are some teams that are very clearly show that it's that it's a key core value. Other teams where they're just really reluctant to, to identify it as a core value. And, and as you heard from Steve's presentation in the last hour, right? If you're not having fun at first, right? Why it's really important that you have fun, right? So for a lot of teams, that's obvious in the sense that it really is kind of a core value. But for other teams, it takes them a while to figure that out. And, um, and so they'll spend a lot of time thinking about different ways of kind of um, identifying fun. They might come up with a different name for it just to kind of um, figure that out. But uh, so that's been a really interesting discussion that I've seen um, with teams that that particular value is one that um, a lot of teams pick up on right away and many other teams just never identify it as a, as a core value. And I think it's a, it's a really interesting discussion that takes place after that. Yeah, it is really interesting and fun is something that's very important. You can't have the team without being able to enjoy it. That just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all the questions we have for now. So thank you very much for your presentation. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thanks for have tuning in, everybody. Yep, good night.